I saw this article online about a guy who brewed beer in a pumpkin. Here at Working Class Foodies, we're always up for a challenge. So I called my best friends, Megan and Corwin, who have been brewing beer in their closet since aught six, and asked them if they could maybe help us figure out how to do this. We've been home brewing now for three, four years. Yeah. So we went up to Megan and Corwin's in New Haven, Connecticut, to pick up all the supplies we would need to make our brew. This week on Working Class Foodies. First, we hit up the orchard to get two pumpkins, one to brew in and one to flavor the beer. Then we went by Maltos Express to buy the hops, malts, and grains we need to make our beer. Finally, it was time to head back to Megan and Corwin's and get to work. You know you're chewing on the road. Well, this is an ale, it's a light ale that we uh, put some pumpkin in when we made the wart. Heat one gallon of water to 155 degrees. Then you add eight ounces of chocolate malt, six ounces of crystal malt, although in this case we used eight because it was simpler to buy it in that amount. Then we remove the pot and we steep the grains at 150 degrees for 30 minutes. Steeping extracts the sugars from the grains that we put in there. Then we heat up some more water to 150 degrees and sparge or rinse the grains into the brew pot. Then we bring the water to a boil, removed it from the heat, and then we added Fuggles, which is the hops we were using, our malt extract. This is a very light sugar, so the yeast will eat this and turn it into alcohol. And our Lyle's Golden Syrup. I think a lot of pumpkin. Then we add enough water so that the volume of the brew pot is two and a half gallons. And then we boil it for 45 minutes. More of hops. The first batch of hops is for bittering. The second batch of hops is for flavor or, and then you could do a third that would be for aroma. And uh, the Irish moss, which helps clarify the beer. Proteins and solids are attracted to the Irish moss and latch onto the moss and then leave the beer nice and clear for you to drink. Boil for 15 minutes. If you don't have a wart chiller, which most people don't, it takes a really long time to chill five gallons of water to um, boiling seven, water yeah, to 70 degrees. Something that first time brewers should consider is, is uh, cooling a lot of water ahead of time or making ice cubes so that they can add that to the wart. That'll help cool it down. When, we, when the wart hits 70 degrees, then we pitch the yeast. And puncture the packet so that this starts to swell up. Then we poured the chilled wart into the primary fermenter. If you did not have a way for the gas to escape the uh, pumpkin, the pumpkin would explode. So this thing that we've rigged up here will allow the gas to escape through the tube and go through this, this water. The water serves as a way that nothing will get into the pumpkin, but it also allows the gas to leave the pumpkin.
Dana Coronado. I'm from San Antonio, Texas. Tamales during Christmas. I make mine more real and more original by adding ketchup. Sounds weird. You never hear about tamales with ketchup, but, you know, that's how I make mine taste better. That's a real treat. So during the brewing process, uh, Corin uploaded some web videos of how the beer was doing. Mm -hmm. Here's our fermenters after a week. After the fermentation slows, we siphon it into a secondary fermenter and let it condition for three weeks. Right now we are sanitizing the secondary fermenter. And that's the beer. And all that junk on the top is uh, the yeast. So siphon beer into the secondary fermenter. The, the key to siphoning is getting all the air out of the hose. So what you want to do is lift the tubing up. That makes it easier to fill it. Almost empty. After it's done fermenting and you've transferred it to the secondary fermenter to let it condition, at that point you can you can get a pretty good sense of what the beer is going to taste like when it's done. And now the real test to see whether it's poisonous or not. I will volunteer myself and my health to test a little of the beer. To your health. Well, I'm starting to feel a little lightheaded. Um, we were just talking about it. And it has the aroma of baking soda and vinegar, apparently. It sort of tastes like the mouthwash you would use after you vomited. All right, so we've got the beer transferred into the secondary carboy, and now <clears throat> It'll just sit and clarify for a week or two weeks until we decide to bottle it. It's two cups of water with one and a quarter cups of the light malt extract. And we'll need to boil this for 10 minutes so that the sugar properly dissolves in the water. And then we'll be able to add it to the fermenters and bottle it so that it gets carbonated in the bottle. The more air you get out of the tube and the bottling attachment, the better. The faster the siphon will go. Because look, it's like it's flying now. After you bottle, you, you let it sit for anywhere between a week to three weeks, and then you drink it. Get smashed. Right now, it tastes sort of like a flat amber ale, I want to say. Well, it's very light. Also, uh, low alcohol content. It's only It was about... specifically designed to have a low yeah. alcohol content for the kids. so that it would, be, uh, it would brew faster. It's like 3.8% alcohol. <laughs> Homebrewing is a complex process. 
But as long as you maintain sterilization, you know, keep everything clean, it's very forgiving, and yeah. your beer will turn out fine. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Even though it does take time and some special equipment to make homebrew, the equipment itself isn't necessarily that expensive. The total cost for our homebrew came to just under $50 for 50 bottles of beer. Not bad. Working class brewery Casca Lantern came out pretty damn tasty. Oh my. Damn, dude. If you've ever homebrewed. <coughs> so, if you've made homebrew before and you have a favorite recipe, let us know. Or if we've inspired you to try it for the very first time, let us know how it goes. Yeah. We'll see you next week on Working Class Foodies. There it is. Oh. <laughs> hey, Hungry Nation. The winner of this week's oven mitts is Alicia. Congratulations, Alicia. So this is our last oven mitts contest, but if you didn't win, don't despair. You've got a really cool contest coming up for the holidays with a fantastic prize planned. You could still win, so stay tuned for more info over the next few episodes. And don't forget, stay hungry.